After the fall of Germany to the communist revolutionaries, many monarchists and conservatives fled to Prussia, but everyone didn't have this chance. The Freikorps in the German colonies in Africa had to fight for any land on the continent. And here we are, we have secured northwestern Congo for the grand nation that is Prussia and the heir of the empire. We are all alone with no allies, but we will stay here and survive at all costs. Still, our future is uncertain. We don't have any prime minister to rule together with our president, Karl Ebermeyer. He must immediately choose one of the two candidates. Hans Huttig, the candidate for the white minority, a militarist, and while he might be excessively violent, he's still an intelligent and powerful man. And on the other side of the black minority is Louis Brody, a celebrity that seeks to establish a welfare state in Congo. Although Ebermeyer preferred having Huttig as prime minister since he would ready up the nation for a campaign of unification of the Congo, he felt forced to choose Brody due to the fear of a black uprising in support of either the Congolese Republic or the People's Republic of the Congo. As Brody was inaugurated Prime Minister, he immediately went to work. Our country is mostly poor and rural, with almost no industrial capabilities. Still, foreigners are interested in investing into our country. A few weeks ago, Dutch entrepreneurs opened the first football stadium in our capital. So, to seize this interest, we will create a local development zone in our capital, Equatorstadt. This way, our civilian economy will begin to flourish. After that, Brody began setting his plan of a welfare state in motion. One where everyone, Prussian or not, will receive benefits from the state. And rather controversially, among the white minority, to reach this goal, he has given citizenship to natives. While they complain that this will undermine their rule and let the neighboring Congolese states infiltrate us, they fail to see the benefits. A greater number of citizens allows for a greater number of conscripts. For example, the army has already started creating new Askari units. And to increase recruitment even more, we have started to create propaganda showing ourselves as the liberators of the Congolese. After about six months since the development zone in Equatorstadt was established, it has been a great success. So we shall create even more industrial zones to bring development to our other cities as well. We are now basically ready to start a unification war. But first, to shrink the effects of war on our population, Brody has finally started to implement his welfare state. At the cost of government money, the basic rights of our people will be met. And now, finally, the war for unification can begin. It might seem we haven't prepared, but it is now or never. With foreign support and access to the world economy, our rivals are growing faster than us. The plan is to first attack the Congolese Republic and try to seize its factories. We only have a single military factory, so seizing theirs would be extremely valuable. So, after preparing our military, we declared war. We had tricked the Congolese, our front was weak, so they immediately started attacking. After the attack had been cancelled, we launched our own across the river. The battle was a decisive victory on our part and two of their divisions had been encircled. They were both crushed as we began a second attack more to the west. We once again crossed the river and cut off almost half of their army from Leopoldville. However, we didn't bother destroying them and we simply began to enter their capital. While resistance was the fiercest here, our highly trained Freikorps and Askari divisions triumphantly captured the city and the Congolese Republic subsequently surrendered. So, we have finally reached the ocean. We will immediately begin to build a new port, one where we will be able to import and export goods and machinery, so that we can reach the modern age. But before we can put our energy on that, we have to unite all of Congo. The Belgian army remnants and the vanguardist People Republic are still a massive threat. We decided to start by dealing with the Belgians, but as we declared war on them, unexpected attacks began in the north. The communists, fearing that the Belgians would fall and that they'd be left alone, had declared war on us. 
Fortunately, we do have troops on their border that can defend. As the Belgians got the news, they immediately launched offensives into our country. It was extremely close that they would manage to break through, but at last we managed to hold them off. We had even managed to advance a bit into North Kivu since the communists weren't at all prepared. A few weeks later in the north we began a second offensive, again against the communists since their troops are worse equipped and less trained than the Belgian ones. We captured one province in Uele and after that we turned south down to northern Kivu. While they tried to stop us by attacking us at the same time these attacks were easily dealt with and we could continue our offensive. Soon we had reached so far into their country the whole Uele state with seven divisions were all encircled. All the while this had happened the Belgians had continued to try and break our defenses. Still with high entrenchment we inflicted nine times more casualties on then than they did to us. So if everything continues like this the war will soon be over. All that we have to do is to crush the encircled divisions and march south towards Elizabethville. <laughs> done it, even though 26,000 of our men are dead and much of our conquered land is in ruins, Congo is united. The Prussian state is safe and Brody will be able to spread his welfare state throughout the country. But the political stability and unity due to the wars quickly flew out of the window. In Equatorstadt the white minority had gotten tired of Ebermeyer supporting Brody and they subsequently began to protest. Soon thereafter counter protests began in favor for Brody against the protest supporting Huttig. And our president couldn't do anything more than to watch. The Congolese supported Brody and the Prussians supported Huttig, leaving him with no supporters at all. After a week of massive protests, Louis Brody had had enough, declaring with the support of the parliament the end of Ebermeyer's presidency and the arrest of Huttig. With the Scary divisions aiding him the coup was successful and Brody has saved Congo from Huttig's insanity. But that's basically all he did, promising to keep the Prussianism of our country to retain our international relations and aid our country to westernize. Because that is another goal of Brody, bring the Congolese nation to the same standards of industrialism and welfare as the Europeans. So with Brody now in complete power we will start to spread the welfare state to all of Congo. However to do this the state will need more money and a bigger industry and for this we have a plan. We will contact the Union Minère du Haut Katanga, the former Belgian mining company of the Congo with its headquarters in Brussels. We will offer them to return to Congo to begin mining copper and even uranium which will boost their profits and grow our industry. Naturally they accepted but to get all the equipment for the new mines we will need a bigger port to the Gulf of Guinea. We started construction and to protect the convoys from pirates we also began researching our very own green water navy. With all the extra money gained from the new mines Brody can finally expand the welfare programs. But not only that he also expanded our education. 
Despite Brody turning out to be one of the most popular leaders in all of Africa, he's still been faced with an ultimatum. Some people are demanding a true democracy with local tribe leaders finally taking part. However, Brody disagrees. As already said, we must westernize and turning us into a tribal democracy would take us five steps backwards. So merciless westernization it is, the tribal leaders will be forced to subjugate to our Prussian and western ideals, all for the freedom of our people. The westernization also includes industrial reforms and cracking down on communism which has infected much of the western world. So finally we are on the right direction, all we can do now is to wait for us to truly become western. And in the meantime we will begin to spread our ideals outside of Congo. Firstly to the Bifran Empire, an old Spanish colony still ruled by Spaniards subjugating the Gabon population. That's how we justified our attack and we immediately started marching into their country. Villa Braza was captured a few days after the war began and Cabina was also encircled shortly thereafter. While two divisions managed to escape we killed one and could continue north. Despite them having many divisions they were all untrained and with low morale we could easily sweep the rest of Gabon and kick all their forces out of mainland Africa. However their leaders are still hiding in their capital Santa Isabel. We will have to wait until our first destroyer gets deployed to launch an invasion of the island and while we do that we can invade the tribal states in our north. Quite unsurprisingly they stood no chance against us, with their weak cavalry divisions getting shredded into bits by our artillery and highly trained infantry. Soon Cameroon, Equatorial Africa and the northern tribe of Lam had all been captured. Our troops now moved back to Santa Isabel and with our very first destroyer under the command of Gunther Wagner we were ready to launch our very first naval invasion. As the first wave of troops arrived the old Spanish colonial forces held their ground but as reinforcements trickled in doubling our strengths we successfully landed and captured the government building putting an end to the war. Our country has been expanded massively and the process of westernization is on its way. What we need to do now is to continue to expand our industry, export more of the raw resources of Africa and expand our welfare state with new subsidies for individuals. Thanks for watching, I hope you don't bother that this video was a bit shorter than usual and see you in the next one.